when we decided to make the film, all we said was to, to Kalel was all we need is access to your life. Um, just let us follow you. And if you need to kick us out of meetings or if you have very personal conversations that you feel uncomfortable with us filming, then just talk to us about it. But otherwise, we want to be there 24 hours a day to get every single part of your life um, as you build this company. So when you watch the film, every single meeting that you see, every conversation that you see, has behind it about 50 hours of waiting for something like that to happen. Um, so a lot of making this film was just kind of waiting around, waiting for interesting, interesting things to happen. So we filmed for about a year and a half of Kalel and his best friend building this company. And um, we accumulated about 400 hours worth of footage. And then we condensed that 400 hours into an hour and a half. We met Kalel, who's the main per person in the movie, uh, about 10 years ago. We went to Harvard together. He studied government and I was studying film. Um, we became friends there and then later on uh, in New York, he needed a place to live and I had an extra room in my apartment and he moved in. Um, the idea really happened very organically and I don't think that you really start a film thinking this is exactly what I'm going to have at the end of my film. You're excited by what's going on around you and you know that you're going to take a journey and you know that the person that you're filming is going to kind of take you someplace and teach you something and that's what's so amazing about this kind of work is that you're able to go into situations that you would never ever have access to. And so when I brought up the idea to Kalel and we began talking about making a movie about what he was about to go through, who knows why he agreed to do it. I think he felt like he was about to jump off a bridge and the fact that somebody might film it was kind of exciting to him. And it was exciting to me because I was thinking, I get to have access without going to business school, with having no understanding of business whatsoever, I get to go behind the scenes of all of the huge investment companies of New York City and really see you know, how this whole world works. And it was something that I'd never seen before. So more than thinking, I'm going to make this film that's going to be exactly like this, it was more like, I'm going to take this journey with them, this journey with Kalel and Tom. I know that it's going to be interesting because I'm excited to find out what they're talking about at nighttime. I'm excited to find out. It was intriguing. It was a story that I was following. And I hope that a film came out of it. Um, and luckily, it became the most dramatic thing that I've ever seen and witnessed in my life, and it turned into a film. Um, but at the beginning, you really don't know what exactly is going to happen. Everybody was very excited. They were getting millions of dollars in the door. Everybody wanted to join the company. But as things progressed and their relationship got more difficult and Tom and Kalel started fighting and the company started failing, um, it got more difficult to get into meetings because Kalel and Tom were thinking, do we really want a film made about our failure? And generally, I said to them, you know, if people are watching this as a movie, they want to be seeing real people and people that they can identify with. And nobody identifies with somebody who is always successful and everything goes perfectly all the time. They identify with characters where there are, you know, difficulties in their lives as well as successes in their lives. So they agreed to let me film these very difficult moments. I knew watching them, though, that it was going to be much more than just a dot-com story of starting a business. It was two best friends starting a company together. So my idea was that it would be a story of business and friendship. And when you have two very different characters, one of them was a business business guy, and another, the other one was more of a touchy-feely, he puts feelings and friendship before business. You know, how does that come into play, especially when there are hundreds of thousands of dollars at stake and all of your friends' jobs and your parents' investment and millions of, of dollars as the money kept coming in? Um, it puts a lot of pressure on a friendship. So that was the story that I was interested in. You know, many people when they watch this film think that we've recreated scenes. When I first showed the film at home in Egypt, um, I 
I had people come up to me afterwards saying, John, these were great actors. Where did you get the actors? And I was like, okay, hold on. There were no actors involved. I waited for everything to happen. There were no reenactments because I was sitting there waiting for a year and a half for these things to happen. I didn't tell anybody to do anything. So contrary to what it may seem like, um, there were no reenactments. So you see that it's very dramatic, but where the really drama really comes from is that we filmed for for, for a year and a half and we're taking 400 hours and putting it into an hour and a half so we've definitely taken the most dramatic moments um, and the most dramatic things that happened and put them into the movie. I think at the very beginning of the filming it affected people's actions. I think people were a little bit nervous around the camera. I remember at the beginning, Khalil was like, do I look into the camera? And I said, no, 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 just don't pay attention to me at all. Pretend I'm not even here. Um, and that's hard to do when you have a camera in your face. But after I followed them around for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in my pajamas, Khalil in the bathroom with his girlfriends, you know, all of the stuff you can imagine in his life, he had to ignore me at some point. So. I'd say a couple months and then they were pretty used to the camera. First of all, making this film I had no life. I mean, I lived Kaleo and Tom's life. I followed them around everywhere they went. I had no social life. Friday night I was sitting waiting for them, you know, in a car while, when, when Kaleo was late coming down and I was thinking, oh, this is, I've completely lost any hope of a social life for the next year. A heartbreaking moment I think in the filming was when we'd been trying to film the board meetings because we knew that it was at the board meetings that everything was going to happen and that you know Kaleo would be put on the spot and be asked where all of the money was going um, what was really happening with the company so the first board meeting we get up at six in the morning everything's prepared and we get there and the lawyer of the company who had just been hired looked at me with my camera and looked at Chris and said you know there's no way you guys are going to film this this can be used in court later against us if the company fails and we said, you know, this is one of the most important parts of the film. This is one of the most parts, important parts of your story. But we couldn't get in. There was no way. Um, so we had to leave them out. And the board becomes, and the venture capitalists become kind of like the man or Charlie behind Charlie's Angels or something like that, you know, where there are these forces acting from above that you never really see but is causing all of this havoc in these young guys' life. So I, I like to think, you know, that it ended up working out in the end to our benefit. Basically, by the end of a year and a half, we had uh, 400 hours worth of footage. Um, and I was looking at these big piles of boxes, thinking there's no way that I'm going to be able to go through this. And I would play tapes while I was cooking. I would play tapes while I was cleaning up, you know, just so that I would hear what was going on constantly. Um, but what happened was we, you, you think to the moments where you really felt excited. And we knew that all of the moments that we were going to have in the film really involved Tom and Khalil because it's a character-driven story. So we went back through the footage of the very exciting times in the company and pieced those scenes together. There's not a script involved because it's reality. You have no idea what's going to happen. We thought that the company would be extremely successful and they would all be millionaires. Tom and Khalil's relationship with the movie throughout the whole filming was pretty distant. Um, I didn't want them to see any of the footage beforehand because we felt like if they saw the footage beforehand they would feel like characters in their own lives and somehow it would affect how they acted or how they spoke. So they didn't see an ounce of footage until the final product. I think the strangest part of making this film was making your friends into film characters um, and seeing the events as, you know, as something that's separate from a friend of yours because you're so tempted when you're seeing Kaleo and Tom fighting. You know what's happening with Tom, you know what he's thinking, you know what Kaleo's thinking, and you know what Kaleo's doing, and you often know much more than either of them know because you're seeing everything happen. And so you're so tempted to say, look, this is what he means, or why don't you just talk to him? Because you know that if you just say something, you can just improve communication and make the situation better. But you just have to believe that you can't play God and you can't affect the situation. And there's things out there that you don't know that you weren't there for and so to take it into your own hands and talk to them about their lives um, and changing the events of their lives I never did uh, but 
how did it affect? I mean, it it was painful. It was so painful watching two friends of yours fighting. I think the most difficult part was really watching Khalil fire Tom. Um, I was sitting in the room in the corner. I knew that something was going to happen that day, so I was kind of hanging around. Um, and I saw Tom go into the room, and I followed him into the room and said, can I film this? And Tom said, yeah. And Khalil said, mm, I don't know. Uh, and I said, look, if there's stuff that's happening with you guys, let me film it and decide later whether you know you want me to use the tape or not want me to use the tape it'll be your decision and so they said okay and I went in and you can't do things like close a window or move the chair so that the lights on their face in the right way because you can't do anything to if you do anything like that you change the situation um, and your your goal is to just have it be as real as possible um, and so I was sitting in the corner it was a little noisy because the window was open and the light was kind of wrong but just sitting watching what happened between them was so moving because I had watched them from the beginning, from the very beginning of the idea to a year later when they're breaking up with each other and one's kicking the other out of the company and, and one of them starts crying and you're sitting there feeling like, you know, what am I? I'm supposed to be a friend and I'm a filmmaker that's kind of, you know, benefiting off of their pain in some kind of way you feel a little disgusted with yourself you feel a little you you completely empathize with them and I guess that's what made me feel better about saying look let's film it and we'll decide later because then I felt like it would be a, a joint decision of what I was doing with their lives at the very beginning I knew it was a very small company uh, it was five people at the beginning and they all knew that we that we decided to make this film and they were all very excited about it and things were going very well um, and it was very much an adventure and you know there was one woman in the company and she would always talk to me and we had these little at Christina who's well I you know there you know so at the at the very beginning it was much it was much easier um, I had a great relationship with everybody in the company they were friends of mine I was mainly hanging out and just filming what I found interesting the relationship with the rest of the company um, was not as close as you'd imagine it to be because I really was following Khalil and Tom around all the time there were about five main characters because it's a story where you want to get attached to the characters you want to see how circumstances affect people and you want the audience to get as close to what they're going through and feeling emotionally as possible and you can't do that if you're following 30 people around but I knew there were times when there were people who got upset that I was able to go into meetings and Chris and I were able to go into meetings that they knew nothing about um, and I really owe it all to Khalil and Tom who said if we want a real story about what we're doing then this is what we're going to do. The scariest part of making this film was showing it to Tom and Khalil. I had nightmares for weeks beforehand of, you know, me showing the footage and Khalil getting up and storming out or like smashing the television screen or something. And so when they finally came and watched it, um, Myself and my partner Chris went into the other room and um, left Khalil and his girlfriend to watch it. And I remember we were listening to the movie playing and we'd hear him rewinding it. And we'd be like, oh my god, which part is he rewinding? Which part are we going to have to take out? And we got so nervous. And then when we came and sat down with Khalil, he acted in a typical Khalil fashion. He wrote down a list, three lists, of how he felt about the movie. So the first list he had was the legal stuff um, and what we could get in trouble for. The second part that he had was, okay, I know that you guys aren't going to change this, but I feel like I look fat here, I feel like I look like an idiot here, you know, but maybe you can do something to 
to, about this wouldn't change any of that because I figured, you know what, he'll get over it. And then the third section, um, the third list that he had was so typical Kalel, entrepreneur Kalel, because he said, you know, I hate the way that I look when I treat my girlfriends. I treat them terribly. I'm never going to get another date in my life, but it's the most sexy part of the movie. I mean, I love watching the scenes of me and Dora in bed together, so you should have more of that, you know? And so that's when I was like, you know, he's still on our side. He's still helping us make a great movie, even though, you know, it's personal. It's really hard. It's watching... You know, we showed the movie to him when his company was going bankrupt. He'd fired 150 of his friends. He'd fired his father. He'd fired his sister. He'd fired his best friend. He'd lost $60 million of investors' money that had believed in him. He was feeling terrible. And then we sit him down and say, OK, here's a year, of your, a year and a half of your life that now you have to watch. So it was tough showing it to him. The film was quite successful in the United States um, and it was very exciting because it was my first film um, and it was sold out the first couple weeks in New York and people were lining up around the block and I was like, oh gosh, I'm never going to see this again. I took a little picture of it, you know. And the most exciting thing is you're sitting in a theater and you've made these crazy decisions, you know, on 20 cups of coffee, on the editing room, you have no idea whether people are going to understand the decisions you've made, whether they're the right decisions, whether people are going to like the film. And so you go into this dark theater, the first time I saw it in a theater with other people, and I'm sitting completely anonymously, nobody knows that you made the film, and you have somebody you don't know on this side, somebody you don't know on this side, and it's, it's thrilling to have people reacting to these small little decisions that you made that you had you had no idea whether they would fail or not. And the the best part about it actually was I started to make a habit of this. I would go into the ladies' room afterwards and kind of like go to the bathroom and sit in the stall and I'd wait for people to come out in the audience and they'd, you know, wash their hands and be talking about the movie and every single time there would be an argument between people of who was the right person, Kalel or Tom, you know? And Kalel is right because he's fighting for the business and Tom is right because he's more of a human person and they'd get into these heated arguments and that was exciting because then it felt like okay, I've showed this story in a true and real way because that's how I felt. I could never decide. I changed all the time as which one I believed in at the time, you know? So, so that was actually the best part of their reaction. And, and the, other, the other part um, that was interesting is that showing it globally um, around the world, people have been able to relate to the movie because it's both a human story and it's a little picture of a time that I don't think we'll ever see again. Um, and it feels like a dream watching it now. This dream of being able to make a million dollars in six months and become your own boss and be creative and have all of your own ideas. And everybody was, was doing it. Everybody wanted to get into it. And that excitement um, was an amazing, an amazing adventure to be a part of.